Hey guys, welcome back to Proctition. Today we're taking a look at the top features on the Huawei MateBook D15. Really quick guys, if you're new to the channel, do consider subscribing for more content like this because we're planning to do a lot more crazy stuff in the future. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. Here are some of the highlight features on the Huawei MateBook D15. We've got a 15.6 inch full HD full view display, a light and compact body weighing in at just about 1.5 kgs. We've also got a smart fingerprint sensor built into the power button, as well as a retractable camera placed within the keyboard. Apart from that, we have the multi-screen collaboration between different Huawei devices, meaning that you can use your tablet as a secondary display to extend your laptop and much more. So let's begin by talking about what we get inside the box. Now the packaging of the D15 is quite straightforward, no extra bells and whistles. In the box, you're gonna get the laptop itself, a 65 watt USB Type-C power adapter, as well as a Type-C to Type-C charger cable. Pretty standard, nothing over the top and crazy here. Now within the laptop, there's a sticker that shows you the placement of the camera itself if you need to know where it's gonna be. So that brings us to the build quality and the design on this. Now, out of the box, it really reminded me of the old school MacBook Pros from back in the day. Pretty similar design and layout to it. As you can see, the sides of the keyboard are kind of on the larger side right here. I, I would have expected to have speakers here, but in fact, they're located underneath the device. So right there, we get the two speakers, the left and right, as well as the ventilation down here at the bottom. We've also got the rubber grips back down here to keep a nice little grip there, which is pretty nice, but nothing else crazy on the bottom side. So we've got a thickness of about 16.9 millimeter. It's pretty thin, but that doesn't really stop it from having uh, enough input output ports. So that actually takes us over to the IO ports. We've got a type C for the power adapter to charge up the device. We've got a USB 3.2 on the left side, along with an HDMI. Then on the right side, we've got two USB 2.0s, as well as a 3.5 mm headphone jack. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the power button also doubles as a fingerprint scanner. So as you tap on it without pressing it down even, it's gonna unlock the laptop itself. It works not the fastest, but it's pretty decent speed. I guess it'd take about a second, second and a half to unlock the device. Works pretty well, pretty secure. Now let's move on to the display on this. A lot of things in this video, I'm gonna classify as decent, and the display is one of them. You get a pretty decent 15.6 inch IPS panel. Uh, it's a 1080p resolution with 141 pixels per inch. You also get a pretty nice, I guess, screen to body ratio. So it, the bezels aren't very thick around it. Uh, and there's no camera to really interrupt the borders of the display because the camera, like I mentioned earlier, is built in to the keyboard. That brings us to the keyboard performance and the integration that I told you guys about earlier for the camera. The keyboard on this is pretty decent. Typing on this feels pretty good. Uh, it's not the best keyboard out there. I did have a few misclicks, but it's pretty standard and it takes a little bit of getting used to. Once you do, uh, it's a pretty good keyboard to use. Like I said, again, a pretty decent keyboard. If you look dead center of the keyboard at the top, you're gonna see a little camera symbol there. That's not to take a screenshot. So if you press it down, it's a physical mechanical switch to bring up the camera, front camera on this. It's a one megapixel camera, which on a laptop, you don't really need something beyond that. It's more for video conferencing and maybe unlocking your laptop using the facial recognition. I do find that to be pretty unique, uh, pretty quick way to get it in and out. Also taking very little real estate on the bezels, giving you more screen real estate essentially. So let's now talk about the performance on here. The model that we've received comes with the 10th gen Intel Core i5 processor and the Intel USD Graphics 620. The laptop also runs on Windows 10 Home Edition 64-bit, which is upgradable to Windows 11 when it's available. Understand that Huawei is trying to make their products part of their ecosystem, so if you have other Huawei devices, definitely watch out for this next part we're talking about. So if you're someone who does a lot of Excel work, doc work, slideshows, presentations, or you run pretty standard basic softwares, this will be able to handle that fairly well. You won't have any issues with that. So for general productivity, whether you're in high school, uh, university, college, that kind of stuff, this is gonna be a pretty good laptop for that. But where it really does shine, like I said, is in the ecosystem side of things. So if you're someone who uses Huawei devices, uh, this is a huge bonus for you guys. Now the ecosystem, the way it's done on this is very seamless and I definitely recommend trying it out if you get a chance to. 
You can connect Huawei smartphones, whether those are flagship or mid-tier phones, as well as the tablets that they do offer all to work together seamlessly, and it makes everything super easy and convenient. So just as an example, the Huawei Nova 8 that we recently reviewed, if you tap the Huawei Nova 8 on the Huawei Share NFC logo right on the laptop itself, it automatically pairs it up with the laptop, allowing you to see your phone screen on the laptop itself. Then after that, you can pretty much use it as an emulator for your phone. All the controls are on there. So if you want to do hands-free, put your phone aside and do everything on your laptop, you can pretty easily do that. That also includes transferring files from and to your phone between the laptop and the phone. And this honestly worked seamlessly and really, really well, especially with the tablet. And this is one of the things that the integration with the Huawei laptop, the D15, made it really, really exciting for me. Now hear me out. This has 120 hertz of refresh rate. You got the stylus support. You can use the M pencil with this, which is very precise and awesome for design work or productivity side of things. And the fact that you can use the multi-screen collaboration between the D15 and this so seamlessly really transformed this into something beyond an ordinary laptop and an ordinary tablet. So what I mean by that is there's different modes to go through once you do connect these two devices. You've got the mirror mode, the extend mode, and the collaborate mode. The mirror mode is pretty simple and straightforward. It replicates your laptop screen onto your tablet. The extend mode is pretty much like connecting an external monitor to your laptop. You can use it as an extension, as a secondary display to drag and drop your different windows, whatever you wanna do. And then finally, we have the collaborate side of things. This is great for more of the graphic designer side of people. So let's say you have the M pencil, you wanna create quick notes or designs or whatever it may be that requires a touch screen and a pen, you can do that over on the tablet and then just drag and drop that over to the laptop. The way the drag and drop works is super seamless, whether that's pictures, notes, documents, files, all of that can be transferred with just a click of a button. So honestly, if you're in the Huawei ecosystem already, uh, this laptop does make a lot of sense, especially if you don't require some crazy high specifications. Now using all that Bluetooth, Wi-Fi for the connectivity between multiple devices obviously begs the question, how does that affect the battery life? Which ideally brings us into the battery life. The Huawei D15 laptop comes with a 42 watt hour battery and supports a maximum of 65 watt supercharge that allows you to charge your laptop from zero to about 53% in just 30 minutes. From my testing, it took about an hour and a half to charge up from zero to 100%. That's pretty darn fast for a laptop. Now using the multi-screen collaboration obviously will drain your battery slightly faster than if you're using it for regular use case because it does rely on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and NFC in some cases. So speaking of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you get Wi-Fi 5 compatibility with the device as well as it being able to support Bluetooth 5.0. Now, like I said, this isn't a true in-depth review necessarily. It's more about the top features and why you should really purchase the D15. I would say the biggest reason to purchase the D15 for anyone would be if you're already in the Huawei ecosystem. The connectivity, the collaboration between multiple devices for Huawei has been done superbly with this one. Especially with using something like this, we're using the Mate View monitor that we also reviewed. Uh, you have wireless pairing and display projection as well. So no cables even needed at that point. And honestly, it just is going to go up from here. And we're very, very keen to see how Huawei handles their next stage in the development for the ecosystem. Now, bringing it back to the pros and the cons, like I said, pretty much everything I mentioned about the ecosystem, just put that in the pro column. That's one of the biggest pros you'll get on there. The second pro obviously would be the build quality and design. It's pretty lightweight. You can take it around anywhere and then hooking that up with your mate view, the tablet, whatever it may be, gives you a very solid portable experience, which I do definitely like. Now, when it comes to the cons on this, I would say it feels like a very old school laptop. It feels like a laptop from, like I said, 2013, 2014, kind of clunky, but that's just me. I think I like the more sleek look, the more, more stylistic design. But yeah, I mean, it's a pretty, like I said, decent standard laptop. So if you don't mind that, you're going to be okay with this. Another thing, I guess, which is not really a con, it's just something I didn't like. I didn't like the keyboard and typing experience on this. I've kind of been spoiled by the MacBook typing experience. So the, the typing experience is not best on here. I do like the fingerprint scanner built in as well as that camera that retracts and goes back in. Pretty cool stuff to see on a device like this. 
So lastly, do I recommend this device? Like I said, if you're in the Huawei system, definitely recommend it. If you're outside of the Huawei system and you don't really own Huawei devices, not necessarily the greatest recommendation I can give you. There's a lot of other laptops within the same price range that might give you better performance out there. So you may consider other laptops. If you are keen, you can check out our Dell Inspiron video that we did, the Inspiron 15. Uh, pretty interesting laptop for content creators. So if you're into something like that, definitely check out that video. That's the one we kind of use to edit a lot of these videos. And that's pretty much it. I think the collaboration between these two is something I'm very keen to explore more on. If you guys enjoyed this video or you want to see more collaboration between Huawei devices, let us know down in the comments so we might make more videos on this. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe for more content just like this. And we'll see you again in the next video. Until then, 